If you've watched The Baby Driver, you already know about tinnitus. It's when your ear has developed an internal but continuous ringing sound, and the easiest way to kind of fix it is to blast noise of your choice loud enough so eventually the ringing stops. It's like covering up the check engine light. Now, why blasting noise really does relax me? It's not because my ears ring; it's to kill silence. You see, silence terrifies me. Every time you see me locked in a quiet room, I'll try and fill the air with familiar noises. I've heard these characters' voices for ages now, and filling the room with them instantly helps me feel better. But now, whenever I try to watch a new series, it comes with a risk: the risk of me choosing to listen to these characters forever. So, committing to a new show has become a bit of a nightmare recently. Commitment in general, though, is an old enemy. This shot is to show you the absence of a bookshelf in my room. Books, in my opinion, require the highest level of commitment, and I could just never. Embarrassingly enough, the only book series I've ever been able to commit and read through is The Wimpy Kid. But instead of books for entertainment, I had gaming. Some of the best characters, stories, and lessons. But I don't just have to sit there and read. I got to actually live them. I'm not saying that games don't require commitment. Though. I mean, most games have a steep learning curve for me. It really takes me a while to get used to the new controls. But by the time the game comes to an end, the controls are pretty much etched in memory, just like video editing software. Now that it's been over four years of editing just in Premiere and After Effects, I don't really remember any of the initial struggles I'd faced while learning. And I think I want to change this. I want to remember what it's like as a new editor to be opening a fresh software for the very first time and relive all the struggles of new controls. Is there today? I've challenged myself to learn everything about DaVinci Resolve in 24 hours. Now the real challenge here is that by this time tomorrow, I should have a fully edited short form video with at least one clean transition, one rotoscoped shot, one effect using 2D tracking, and a little bit of sound design. Now this means that I don't just have to learn editing in DaVinci. I also have to plan and shoot a whole video in just the same 24 hours. Now of course the point of this video is to document the whole process of learning a new video editing software, and I'll be sure to note down all the tutorials that I watch and learn from, and list them down in the description. Now let's go launch DaVinci for the first time together. Just launched a new project inside DaVinci, and here are a few things every editor should recognize right off the bat. This is obviously the timeline where all my videos will show up. This is where all my media is stored. This is probably the viewer window. I can see a keyframe panel, an effects panel, and overall the software looks pretty easy to me. I'll now probably spend time doing what I advise others to do. It's to watch a few introductory tutorials, which will help me first explore the software without really having to touch anything, and then later on we can start editing. So I've just spent a couple of hours getting lunch, watching tutorials when I realized that when I was learning After Effects, I always had a final edit in mind. It was like a final destination I was trying to get to and I think that's what I need right now. If I have an edit in mind, I can then search and learn from tutorials that teach that specific effect or technique. I think this is overall a faster and more focused method to learn, so that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna scroll through Instagram and find a trend that I've been wanting to hop onto. I'm seeing some of the best edits right now being made to this remix. The song is full of emotion and I think it'll easily carry a just a game edit. Edit. I'm basically recreating one of my old edits but with a different hook this time. Now this helps me in two ways. One, I'll only have to waste time shooting for the hook of this video and second that I get to reuse the game footage from the earlier edit. Now this decision was really important considering I only have 24 hours to also learn Da Vinci. I'm gonna start this edit in a bit of an unusual way and make the audio edit first. Having the clips placed on the timeline will give me an estimated length that each video clip will have to be when I'm shooting next. Editing the audio will also require the least amount of knowledge about the software as I just need to know how to keyframe volume. For the edit, I'm planning on using Joel's voice saying, I would do it all over again. And in the edit, it kinda looks like I'm the one talking and I would want to play all these games all over again. In the last edit, I'm looking through my old stuff and find an old controller which then takes me inside the game. But for this edit, the controller will find me unexpectedly and I think this story will make more sense with Joel's voiceover. I'm now gonna go quickly shoot while there's still daylight and then I can spend the rest of the challenge just learning and editing. Right now, I'm preparing to shoot for the hook of the video and if you know anything about content, you know how important those 3 seconds those 3 seconds are. Before watching the tutorials, I was hoping to learn 3D camera tracking in DaVinci and I was planning to use that as the hook effect for any video because 3D tracking is always eye catching. But now when I realize that 3D tracking does not come in the free version of DaVinci, I'm still gonna keep the same push in motion for the hook but not do a text effect on it. I'm still planning to use this clip to complete 2 of my 4 challenges. It's still gonna have a clean transition and I'm hoping to achieve that transition using masking. I'm also shooting a couple of levitation shots that I'm hoping would require me to learn 2D tracking and complete the 
the third challenge. When you try to place a tracker node in the fusion window, three options show up. Now I know that camera tracking is not available in the free version, but it still gives you the option of planar tracking. And if it works like I think it does, I can simply place a white circle on the CD, use it as an inverted alpha mask to create a window through which my camera will fly through for the first transition. The node workflow of DaVinci seemed pretty straightforward till it was time to make a 3D camera. Thankfully, there are these godly YouTubers who have attempted something similar before and posted a tutorial for free. Till this point, I haven't really worried about resolutions, frame rates, compositions, but I have a feeling that DaVinci is made in a way that it takes care of it for you. I then placed the rest of the intro in the timeline, watched more tutorials to add glow and color to the controllers and by this time, it was pretty late at night, so I called it in. I woke up early the next morning to still find 70% of my timeline empty. The pressure set in and I started placing clips quickly. This was probably the most fun I've had with Da Vinci because I didn't have to deal with nodes anymore and I just had to place clips that I've already watched. The rest of the edit was pretty fast knowing that I just have to place sound effects now and that's what I did till the end. The 24 hours officially ended a couple of hours ago and before I show you the final edit, I wanted to come clean. I did manually mask and even use the luma key effect for two clips. But it's really hard spending hours manually masking each frame when you know that there are websites out there that literally do it for free within seconds. So for these two shots, I bought them inside After Effects, rotoscoped the controller and pot packed the elements inside DaVinci. Apart from this, everything else has been completely edited inside of DaVinci Resolve's free version. If somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. So here are my few final thoughts. DaVinci is a capable software. If you have the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, you basically have After Effects and Premiere Pro both combined in a single package. DaVinci offers almost everything that After Effects does and sometimes even more. The node system probably helps a lot of people visualize the effect they are making, but it seemed overwhelming to me. I think what makes learning a new software really hard is our own lack of knowledge. When I first opened the software, every drop down I clicked, every menu I opened, every clip I tried to adjust gave me a thousand different options and I didn't know what any of them do and it's scary. Tutorials obviously only talk about the necessary settings and leave you curious about the rest of them. You also can't really go about clicking everything because you don't know what it does and you don't even know if you can undo the changes. So spending time experimenting still remains as the only correct way to learn a new software. There are always multiple ways to achieve the same effect but it's on you if you want to follow others or figure it out on your own. I counted and I watched about 25 tutorials mostly at 1.5x the speed and I'm so so thankful for each and every one of them. Some of them are literally 20 seconds long but they help solve a doubt when no one else could help. I'm so glad these YouTubers face problems and decide to help everyone else out. Then. I've linked down all the tutorials I've watched in the last 24 hours in the description below. Shout out to each and every one of them and I'll see you in the next one.